Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Yash here. Today we want to talk about the new Canon 90D. Disclaimer, this video isn't a review or any thought. I haven't used the camera yet. This is more of my first impressions and what I think about the camera. So recently Canon launched the successor of the Canon 80D, which is this guy right here. And when this thing came out, it was a great success. It was the perfectly balanced camera when if you want to shoot photos or videos. And it was the go-to camera when it came to creating online content and it wasn't anything special it didn't have a lot of features that other camera at that time were offering like it didn't have 4k it didn't have 120p and 1080 it has okay specs for a video like it could only shoot at to 1080p and 60. it had a flip out screen which is a must have must thing if you want to create online content and it had great battery life it had amazing looking colors and and it was the camera that you know would just work but it doesn't matter whatever you throw at it and I had mine for the last four years when it first came out and this thing has worked like a charm it has never let me down it has taken a hell of a beating and yeah I would say it has performed way over I expected it would ever and yeah I would say I'm totally satisfied with it and when I heard that Canon is gonna release its successor I thought that they would go with the mirrorless route considering all the other companies whether it be Sony, Panasonic are going at it and even Nikon is focusing more on its Nikon Z and Z, Z6 and Z7 lineup. And looking at that, Canon has released a couple of pro level mirrorless cameras that are the EOS R and the RP. The EOS RP is not much, but the EOS R is definitely a pro level mirrorless camera. But they did and they went with the old DSLR like form factor. And don't get me wrong, this is not a bad thing. A lot of people still recommend the DSLR form factor over the mirrorless. And it has a nice grip it feels nice and honestly when you consider the way a dslr feels in your hand and the way it grips to a mirrorless camera um, it's not that much satisfying and um, it feels like this thing in your hand can do some serious work and if you look at on the 90d from the front you wouldn't be able to tell if it is the 90d or the 80d there's no physical difference from the front besides the 90 and 80d logo on the front and there's only a couple of physical changes on the back of the 90D. There is now a navigation joystick on the back. I'm not a big fan of those. I haven't liked those things that much. I prefer to use the touch LCD over those, but it's good to have that. And the rare spinny wheel thingy that you, to, that you use to change up your photos and videos has changed now. It's more like that is found on the EOS R. I'm not a big fan of it. It doesn't feel that good as the old one, but okay, that's not much of a big deal. And yeah, there's nothing else different on the 90D that you can say without looking at the logo that, yeah, it's a 90D. Mainly the things that has changed are on the inside. So now let's look at those. So now the 90D has a 32 megapixel sensor over the 24 megapixel found on the 80D. And now it can shoot in 4K and 120p, 1080. Canon finally put those specs on a camera that is mainly used for content creation. And honestly speaking, I thought that 4K and 120p, 1080 would be available on the ADD, on the ADD when it was about to came out, but it didn't. A lot of cameras those days that were coming out, like the A6300, has those things, but the ADD didn't, and that was not much of a deal. But I think Canon actually delayed it a lot over after the release of 80d still i think the 90d is the only camera that can shoot in 1080p 120 besides the 1dx mark ii so yeah better late than never and the 90d still has the flip out screen which is always accepted i think every camera company should use this form factor over those flimsy tilde things on the sony and the nikons so what is there still a crop factor? Nothing, nothing. I'm not gonna go in total detail like what the extended ISO levels. It can shoot up to 25,600. That doesn't matter to me. I never go above 3,200. It can shoot up to 28,000 of a second, stuff like that. I'm not much fan of it. Let's look at the 4K frame rate. It can shoot up to 20, it can shoot up to 30 frames a second 4K. So that's okay. 120p in 1080. And the Canon 90D doesn't have 24 frames per second. I don't know why that doesn't make any sense not to put in it, but 
I shoot a lot of stuff in 24 frames per second and not having 24 frames per second is a bit of downside for me I guess. It still has a record limit up to 30 minutes. It's still not good. The 90D still has the amazing dual pixel autofocus like the 80D. It's still amazing. It's still the best autofocusing system on the market. And there's also now IAF in the 90D. So that's a pretty good plus point over there. But I'm not sure if it works in video or not. I will look it up. But if it doesn't work in video mode, then that's not that good, I would say. If it is there, why not put it in video as well? And there's one more thing that I forgot to mention is that the 4K on the 90D doesn't have a crop or anything like that. It's straight out full sensor readout. But there's an option to crop into the image to give you a, a bit more reach with your lenses. That is a feature found on full frame cameras like the a7 III, mostly Sony cameras and the EOS R and stuff like that. But I went on the 90D which is a pro crop sensor camera and giving you full sensor readout 4K with a bit of crop on if you want. This pretty great props for that and what else it still has a single sd card slot that's not a big thing i've never i don't care about dual sd card slots still use one card at a time it is uhs2 so that's a good plus it has the headphone 3.5 mm headphone jack good it has a microphone port it has a micro usb which is the old type connector found on the add and not the new micro usb c it still uses the old canon lpe6 battery that is being used on the ADD, 5D Mark IV, 60, and 5D Mark III, too. I don't know for how long. And so that's a plus point that you don't need to get a separate battery set for just new camera. And I'm not sure how the battery life would be considering that it was pretty good on the ADD. And so I think it would last quite good. And I forgot to mention one more thing that in 120p 1080p you lose the dual pixel autofocus and also the sound. I'm not complaining about the sound, I don't care if there's sound in a slow motion video but losing the autofocus in 120p is not good considering that most of the cameras that are on the market that shoot does shoot in 120p does have autofocus while you're in it but the 90 d doesn't have it so it makes using the 120p a bit more harder. So those were the main things. There's nothing amazingly new on the 90D. So is it worth to get the 90D? So I'm gonna say if you already have something like the 80D, I don't think it's worth that much to upgrade to the 90D. If you're mainly using it for online content creation, then I would say, yeah, it's a pretty good camera. But there are a lot of other cameras that are good to look at, like the new Sony 6600, the A64, A6400, that's pretty good. There's also the Fuji X-T3 which is one hell of a video camera if you're more into videography and con on content creation and videography and filmmaking stuff. And if you want to spend a little bit more you can get the Sony a7 III which is a full frame camera, it's an amazing camera or you can even get the GH5 which is the best YouTube online content creation camera on the market right now. But if you have something like a 70D or an old Rebel camera, then yeah, the 90D is well worth to upgrade to. So yeah, that's all what I have to say. Give the video a thumbs up if you love what you saw and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.